Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 15 of the chapter States of Matter. In part 14, I explained the ideal gas equation to you. In this video, we are going to start solving a few numerical problems based on the ideal gas equation. The questions in the NCRT textbook exercise, they are a little more applicative. Therefore, I have chosen these three questions that I'll be doing in this video today from the New York Prentice Hall textbook because I would like to take you from a, an easier level to a higher level. I have written out the various values of R, that is the gas constant here. And we, as I told you in the previous video, that these values depend on the unit of pressure and volume that are taken. It would be useful if you could memorize these, this table. It would be much easier if you just memorized it. But in other case, unlike right now, I've just written these out for you to refer to what units, which one, which value of R would you be using. Let us start with solving the problems. When the temperature of a rigid hollow sphere containing 685 liters of helium gas is held at 621 Kelvin, the pressure of the gas is 1.89 into 10 to the power 3 kilopascals. How many moles of helium does the sphere contain? We know the ideal gas equation is PV is equal to nRT. So we have five quantities here. Pressure, volume, number of moles, the value of R and T. Out of these, four are given to us and one is to be found out. And there are a few variations of this that we have studied in the previous video. Let us now look what all is given and what is the unknown quantity. When the temperature of a rigid hollow sphere containing 685 liters, so the volume is given to us is 685 liters of helium gas is held at 621 Kelvin. The temperature is 621 Kelvin. Remember that in the ideal gas equation, the temperature should always be in Kelvin and the N, N stands for number of moles. The values of, that is the units of pressure and volume and based on that, the value of R they and it, its units, they change. So we, we have seen that volume is in liters, temperature is in Kelvin, which means this is what we want. We want it in Kelvin. If it was in degree Celsius, we would have converted it to Kelvin. So that is the temperature 621. The pressure of the gas is, the pressure is given, is 1.89 into 10 to the power 3 kilopascals. We've been given the pressure in kilopascals. And he asks you, the unknown quantity now is how many moles does it have? How many moles of helium does the sphere contain? So now N is number of moles, P is given, V is given, T is given. And we have to see which value of R should be used based on these units. The units of volume and pressure. So we need liter kilopascal. Look here, liter kilopascal. 8.314 liter kilopascal. Yesterday, I told you about this that 8.314 meter cube pascal, I did not discuss this one. The 8.314 meter cube pascal, to convert meter cube to liter, you need to, uh, you need to multiply it by 10 to the power 3. And to convert pascal to kilopascal, you have to divide it by 10 to the power 3. So the numerical value remains the same, but the units change. So whether you're writing, you're using the units meter cube pascal or joules or liter kilopascal, the value remains 8.314 for these three. This is just uh, for you to make it easier for you to memorize these. So now let us uh, use the formula. We are looking for N. So PV is equal to NRT. And since we are looking for N, N will be equal to PV and take RT down here. So if you bring RT down, it would be R and T. The value of P is 1.89 into 10 to the power 3 kilopascal into the vol volume is 685 liters divided by R. Now the R I told you would be 8.314 and what are the units that we have to use? Kilopascal and liter, liter kilopascal per mole, that is mole inverse, Kelvin inverse, in 
to. Now the temperature here is 621 Kelvin. Why I always suggest that you write units when you're solving numerical problems is that when you cancel out the units, you always can make out whether the answer that you get is correct or not based on the units. So let us first cancel out the units. Liter and liter are cancelled. Kilopascal and kilopascal are cancelled. Okay, Kelvin plus one and Kelvin minus one cancelled. Mole inverse means this will go up here. And what are we looking for? Number of moles. So all of the units are cancelled. You are left with moles. So you should get your answer in moles. When you solve this, you will get the value 2.5 into 10 to the power 2 mole. The mole inverse means mole comes up here. So the answer is 2.5 into 10 to the power 2 mole. Right? So let us solve another problem. The question is, a child's lungs can hold 2.20 liters. That's the capacity of the lungs, the volume. How many grams of air do her lungs hold at a pressure of 102 kilopascals and a body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius? Use a molar mass of 29 grams for air, which is about 20% of oxygen, that is 32 grams per mole and 80% of nitrogen that is 28 grams per mole. We know air is a mixture. Therefore, we are taking the percentage composition of air and finding out the average molar mass. So we say you can use the molar mass of air to be approximately 29 grams. So we'll take it as 29 grams. So let us see again, what are the quantities given to us? A child's lungs can hold 2.20 liters, which means volume is 2.20 liter. How many grams of air? Grams, mass is asked. Grams of air means mass is asked. Okay? Do her lungs hold at a pressure of, the pressure given is 102 kilo pascals. And a body temperature, temperature given is 37 degrees Celsius. Remember, for all gas laws, the temperature should never be in degrees Celsius. It should be in Kelvin. So we we'll have to convert this. So add 273 to this. 273. If you add 273, you'll get 307891. 310 Kelvin is your temperature. Right? And use a molar mass. Molar mass of air is 29 grams. Now, what is the ideal gas equation? The ideal gas equation is PV is equal to nRT. Now, we've not been given N. We have to find out what R is based on these units. We've been given grams. We've, we've been asked the grams and the molar mass is given to us. We know number of moles is equal to mass upon molar mass. So we can modify this equation now to PV is equal to M, small m, that is the mass, over molar mass. Both are in grams. Mass upon molar mass are T. And what have you been asked in the question? M, right? Let us see what will be the value of R that we will use here. Since the volume given to us is in liters, and pressure is in kilopascals. Volume is in liters and pressure is in kilopascals. Again, the value will be 8.314. 8.314 liters, kilopascals per mole per Kelvin. I've just put these here to tell you that per mole per Kelvin is common for all of these. It is the, uh, the units of pressure and volume which are different. So let us now substitute these values or rather what are we looking for? We are looking for M. So if we are looking for M, let us write the formula. What would it be? M should be equal to, now M should be equal to, PV remains as such. On the other side, we are keeping M on one side and moving everything else on the other side. So on the other side, you have PV, M goes up. So into capital M, that is molar mass, upon the R and T will go down here. So R, T. Now, this is what the formula that we have to use. Now, let us substitute the values in this formula. So, mass would be equal to 
pressure is 102 kilopascals into what is the volume 2.20 liters and molar mass is 29 grams per mole the molar mass would be 29 grams per mole and divided by the value of R is 8.314 liter kilopascal per mole per Kelvin into the temperature is 310 Kelvin, right? So let us now cancel out the unit so that we know we, if we are getting our answer in grams. Liter, liter, cancelled. Kilopascal, kilopascal, cancelled. Per mole, per mole, cancelled, right? De Kelvin inverse and Kelvin cancelled. So we are left with grams, right? So that is what we are looking for. We are looking for the mass in grams. How many grams of air? So that's what is asked. So when we solve this, we will get the answer. This will be 2.524 grams. 2.524 grams. So a child's lungs can hold 2.20 liters. 2.524 grams of air per lungs would hold at a pressure of 102 kilopascals and a body temperature of 37 degrees celsius which is 310 kelvin and we have used these this molar mass of air to be 29 grams per mole right so this was question number two let us do one more question and then in the next video we move on to the ncrt textbook exercises okay so now this will be the last question that we do before the ncrt textbook exercise and the last question of this video. The question is, a deep underground cavern, a cavern is a cave, contains 2.24 into 10 to the power 6 liters of methane gas at a pressure of 1.50 into 10 to the power 3 kilopascals and a temperature of 315 Kelvin. How many kilograms of methane does the cavern contain? Let us see what all is given to us and what is expected. A deep underground cavern contains 2.24 into 10 to the power 6 liters. It means this is the volume. Volume is 2.24 into 10 to the power 6 liters, right? Of methane gas at a pressure, pressure is given 1.50 into 10 to the power 3 kilopascals, right? And a temperature, the temperature given is 315 Kelvin. Since the temperature is in Kelvin, we need not change it. How many kilograms of methane does the cavern contain? Now, when what is asked, the mass has been asked, and the unit, the mass is usually in grams that we calculate. But the question is that how many kilograms are there, right? And what is the molar mass of methane? Carbon and four hydrogens. Carbon has a mass of 12, hydrogen has a mass of 1, so 1 into 4 would be 4, so the mass of molar mass of methane is 12 plus 4, that is 16 grams per mole, or mole inverse, let me write it. That will help me to cancel out the units, right? So now we are again going to use the same formula. The ideal gas equation is PV is equal to nRT, but N if you take mass and molar mass can be uh, written as PV is equal to N is the mass given upon molar mass into RT. Now the mass has to be found out, the molar mass we have calculated. The value of R, let us see what will be used again liter and kilopascal. It is again the same, that is 8.314. So what would the mass be equal to? Mass, let us now put everything else on the other side of the equation would be equal to PV into capital M, that is molar mass, upon RT. Substitute the values. P, pressure is 1.50 into 10 to the power 3 kilopascals. Volume is 2.24 into 10 to the power 6 liters and molar mass is 16 grams per mole, right? In the denominator, what do we have? 
R is 8.314 in, sorry, the units are liters, kilopascal, per mole, per Kelvin, right? And then let us write the temperature is 315 Kelvin. Now the answer that we get should be in grams here, right? Because mass in grams upon molar mass in grams. So let us cancel out the units. Kilopascal, kilopascal goes off. Liter, liter goes off. Per mole, grams per mole and per, per mole go away. K inverse and K are cancelled. So now you will get your answer in grams. When you plug all these values into the calculator, the value that you would get would be equal to 2.05 2.05 into 10 to the power 7 grams. But the question is that how many kilograms of methane? Now a thousand grams make one kilogram. So you will divide this by thousand and when you do that, the number of kilograms that you would get would be 2.05 into 10 to the power 4 kilograms. Right? One, uh, let me tell you this, you use a unit conversion factor to convert a gram into kilogram. One gram is, sorry, 1000 grams are one kilogram. So make two unit conversion factors, a thousand grams upon one kg should be equal to one kg upon a thousand grams, right? So what do you want? You want the grams to go away and you want kg to come. So you will use this unit conversion factor divided by a thousand. So 10 to the power 7 will turn into 10 to the power 4 to give you the answer in kilograms. So these were a few problems on the ideal gas equation. And in the next video, we solve a few problems of the NCRT textbook exercise. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel, share uh, the videos with your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.